hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you please invite your friends and today we have a very interesting topic uh, don't forget please to share the video and uh, I know many of you are lazy you are careless uh, but there is a few of you who care so those we speak to those not the rest our topic today is a question been asked to Yasser Qadi A Muslim asked him the following question. Even if you know that uh, Muhammad was sincere, how do we know he was not deluded? Meaning, he believes that he is getting a revelation from God and he is really sincere, but he is really crazy. So, um, this is a point that some non Muslim academics believe. Now, as you probably know, I, I have studied in the Western academia. I have my PhD from a non-Muslim university. So I read a lot about what others say about our Prophet ﷺ. By and large, the medieval theories that used to exist that our Prophet ﷺ uh, uh, is, is uh, some type of deranged person or some type of uh, you know, power-hungry person, by and large, most Western non-Muslims who study Islam have discarded those theories. What do they believe? They believe exactly as the questioner has said. And that is, they will say, and there are many authors you can find, uh, many famous people who will say this, that clearly our Prophet Wasallam believed himself to be a Prophet. Because they cannot explain it in any other way. He believed himself to be a Prophet. He was sincere in his own belief. They have to acknowledge this. And uh, You know, Hardly I can let a video of a Muslim continue without stopping it Because here you ask yourself if this guy he claimed to be an Islamic teacher or he is just a kid on the stage If we go in the Quran, we will find that Muhammad he don't believe himself that he is an Islamic um, Let us say a believer Muhammad he have adopted about himself to be a believer and even he tried to commit suicide because of that so when a Muslim he says what he say in the stage, is that like a salesman in the car dealership trying to sell us a car, or he is being honest? Chapter ten, verse number ninety-four says it clearly that Muhammad he have adopted about what he been revealed to him, which means the voices he hear, and the one who speak to him told him, go and ask the people of the book. If you don't believe me here you will notice that Muhammad not only don't believe in himself to be a prophet is being stupid because how you say to your people that those Christians are kuffar how you say to your people the Jews are kuffar and then you're a stupid God who told you that they are kuffar saying to you go and ask them You know what I'm saying? So when a Muslim he claimed to be a cleric or a scholar or a sheikh and he stand to give you an answer, never listen to them. They are a bunch of liars and they have no dignity. And the proof in the front of you. Actually, this verse proved that Muhammad is a crazy person. In in the best scenario, he's so stupid, if not crazy. Like I say to you, those don't listen. I just told you don't listen to him, and then I say to you, listen to him. He is telling the truth, you know. Either he is telling the truth, he's a liar. So either the Christian are lost, the Muslim they pray five times a day, in their prayer they say, Oh Allah, don't make us the same as the lost Christians or the cursed Jews. So how you keep saying in Al Fatiha five times a day, Oh Allah, please don't make us you know, the phobia. The phobia of Muhammad don't make us the same as the Christians and the Jews, the lost Christians, and the, you know. Okay, when 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 you read the chapter of Al Fatih, Hadis chapter one, you will say it says something very stupid from the beginning. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Look, who is the one who's talking? They said to you, Allah. Like why Allah? He says in the name of Allah. Imagine I start my video saying to you in the name of Christian Prince, you all of you will laugh at me. Well, aren't you Christian Prince? So 
every single statement in the Quran is a scandal is a disaster and then Allah he says praise be to Allah Allah he says praise be to Allah and then Allah he says thee do we worship and we seek aid a Muslim will say to you oh this is a prayer okay did Allah say pray like this or this is a verse given to Muhammad no it's given to Muhammad okay so in order to be considered as a prayer Nowhere in the Quran it says this is a prayer, by the way. It's Quran, just Quran. As you see, from verse number one to verse number seven, nowhere it says pray like this. Okay. In order for this to be a prayer, then Allah should say to Muhammad, and he mentioned before in the Quran, Qul, which means say. He did not say that. So, thee do we worship, who is talking Allah? Allah saying, do we worship thee? And we say the eid of thee. And then in verse number uh, seven, if we can correct a verse, uh, the way of those whom you has bestowed the, the grace, uh, okay, mm. not like those who they are get your worth, you know, like uh, your curse or those who left astray. You go and read the interpretation for this, you will see that those who they are getting the curse of Allah is the Jews, and those who lost astray are the Christians. And then we will find the Abdul, the, the biggest Abdul in the world, Allah. He said to his Abdul Muhammad, if you have a doubt about what we gave to you, go and ask Christian Prince. You idiot. How you are saying that Christian Prince is a kafir? He is going to go to hell. He don't believe in the true God. He have a corrupt book. And then you say to him, go and ask Christian Prince. If you are a prophet or not. So when this guy he is saying that Muhammad he believe in himself he's lying, and not only that we have farther more evidence that Muhammad he don't believe himself to be a prophet. If we go here as an example, <clears throat> all right. This is Sahih al Bukhari, and Muslims cannot say you know Sahih al Bukhari is even more strong than the Quran for the Muslim they worship al Bukhari. And the funny Al-Bukhari, he is not an Arab, and he was not in the time of Muhammad, and he came hundreds of years after Muhammad, yet he can tell you all the stories of Muhammad. This is Sahih Al-Bukhari, Hayyith number 6982, all right? And it says here that the Prophet becomes so sad when the inspiration pause. The inspiration pause. Why Why the inspiration pause? Because what Waraqab Nufar, who was making Quran, he died, but a few after a few days, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was also paused. Have you ever heard of a God? He stopped sending his message because a guy he is not even a Muslim. He died. So paused for a while, okay, and then the prophet becomes so sad. As we have heard, he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains. Now, until now, we can say he is sad because he don't receive revelation only. Not because he don't believe. But listen carefully, he don't believe. Because the story continues saying, and every time he went up to the mountain in order to throw himself down, Jibreel, which is supposedly the angel, by the way, there's no Gabriel in Islam, there's Jibreel, even the name, the name is wrong. Mr. Jibreel, the pizza boy, uh, he would appear before him and say, Oh Muhammad, you are indeed Allah Messenger. In truth, whereupon his heart would become quiet and would calm down and return home. So why Muhammad want to kill himself? Because he don't believe he's a prophet. But we just heard this liar saying that Muhammad was sincere. He believed he's a prophet. With his their own stories, their own books saying and Muhammad action saying Muhammad was not sincere. And he was not a prophet. 
Because a prophet, when I tell me about the prophecy, but he cannot prophesy about himself that he is a prophet. I mean, he found the prophecies about Jesus, but he cannot find the prophecy about himself. Isn't it the Quran says that Muhammad said to them, go and you will find my name in your book? And the Muslims, they spend centuries and they come at the end with Muhammadim, the Song of Song. And the dad was making fun of the Song of Songs for all his life, saying this is a book of porn. So the second somebody told him Muhammadim, Muhammadim, suddenly it became about the legs of Muhammad. And Muhammad became so beautiful. And Muhammad had nice breasts. When this is a description of Jerusalem. So when they say that Muhammad was a sincere, obviously not, because Muhammad, he keep doing that. And not only once, not only twice, it says here, and whenever the period of the coming of the inspiration, and the funny here, it says inspiration, because inspiration is something come to you directly in your head, not somebody delivered to your door. So even Islam, you know, Muhammad, he brought wrong understanding for the word wahi. In Arabic, wahi exactly is inspiration, correct translation. So, but wahi or inspiration is God inspiring you, not God sending you a guy knocking at your door. That is not inspiration. That is delivery. And all the Muslims agree that Muhammad never received anything but delivery, not inspiration. So whenever the inspiration, according to translation here, says used to be uh, to become long, he would do as before, and this is again a sign of stupidity. Will the angel he appear in front of you in the top of the mountain last time, and the second time, and the third time, and each time he says to you, you are a prophet indeed, in truth, and then you come down and you go home. So why you are doing it again? There's one of two answers. Muhammad, he like it. He's playing hide and seek with the angel. So he climbed the mountain waiting for the angel. Hey, angel, I'm going to call myself. Come over. Hey, hey come here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going through myself. And the angel, he is fool. So he come, Muhammad, please don't do it. Please, Muhammad, Habibi, you are a prophet indeed, you know. This is what it says. Or Muhammad is a stupid to the point he don't believe the angel. If Muhammad believed the angel and he believed Allah, he will not keep doing this. So when Yasa Qadi, he said what he said, obviously he is a liar. Let us see more excuses. <clears throat> Listen carefully. Sometime from a few minutes videos, you can make a book, you know, to prove their, their lies and their, and their ignorance actually. I mean, you are fooling who? And it's very embarrassing, always in Islamic society, not nobody stand up, there's no people who searching for a truth in this religion. Otherwise, why nobody says to him, hold on, well, Muhammad, he don't believe himself. And there's many verses in the Quran saying that. Hold on. You're a prophet, he tried to commit suicide because he don't believe in himself. How come nobody mentioned anything? Because as long as you are defending Islam in Islamic society, you are a hero. The second you start questioning, people will hate you. Don't question to question. You know, a question to refute is okay, which means we make a question. We make a question. Most of the Islamic program, like this guy, his name is Yusuf State. Oh, there is somebody calling us. Oh, you are a Catholic. Uh huh. But you don't hear anyone talking. Only him, he can hear the call. Ah, oh, you are a Catholic. Ah, oh, what is your question, brother? Uh huh. Oh, why the Muslim believe in killing us, uh, Christians? Ah, oh, okay, I will answer you, brother. They fabricate questions because they cannot take life on air questions and talk. So let us see what uh, what Zakir Naik, sorry, what uh, Yasser Qadi. I mean, both of them they are funny. All of them are funny. The prophet is funny and stupid. I mean, imagine this prophet climbing the mountain every day. And then he want to jump. And then he's, and the angel appeared to him before he jumped. I mean, how is stupid even the angel? Why don't appear to him before he go to the top of the mountain? Why Allah don't send his dog, Jibreel, to Muhammad to grab him from his pants? Say, hey, Muhammad, wow, wow, don't, don't go, Muhammad, don't go. You wait for the guy until he climbed the mountain. 
And then you tell him you are a prophet indeed. Tell him those message before he leave the house. Uh, maybe Muhammad was, you know, he liked to go to the gym. He want to lose weight. He want to climb the mountain. Okay, go ahead. Tell us more, Yasser uh, Qadi. There's a hole in the the the, the standard, standard narrative has holes. It's not only the standard narrative have holes. Your prophet have holes. You have holes. Your religion have holes. Everything everything you are saying is is a holes. Our Prophet وسلم, believed himself to be a Prophet because they cannot explain it in any other way. He believed himself to be a Prophet. He was sincere in his own belief. Mm -hmm. They have to acknowledge this. And most non-Muslims who study Islam detailed in detail, this is their conclusion. So what they're saying is he is slightly mentally crazy, but not fully mentally crazy. Really, huh. that's what they're saying, if you think about it. Now, this itself is ludicrous because no mentally unstable person can remain fully stable in every single arena of life. Every like what? Every single arena in life. Every single arena. Of life. Let us see how Muhammad he take a shower as an example. I mean, simple arena of life. Muhammad preparing to do wudu. Muhammad is preparing himself to meet Allah. Muhammad is cleaning himself so he can pray to Allah clean. What he do? He jump in a jacuzzi, small, tiny body of water, and it's not running water. Have dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage. This is the most simple, I mean, thing to understand about. Imagine you go to a person. I want to go uh, to a church, and then I, I want to meet the bishop, and then I go and find the bishop. Uh, he is in a jacuzzi, let us say, in the back of the church, they have like a small jacuzzi for the kids. And this bishop, he is sitting with dead dogs in the water, and there's women rags from period, and garbage. And even it says, the hay says it stink, nudges. Nothing, sorry. This is the Arabic period going in front of your eyes. Nothing, when nothing is in Arabic, simply the very, very stinky smell. So this is not only a garbage, it is a garbage which is in the process of being the most disgusting. And what the Prophet is doing is jumping in that water. Now explain to me, Yasser Qadi, how much stable this person is. And you will notice that people, they were asking him, how you do that? Which means the Arab don't do that. Like, you know what, if the whole society are a bunch of crazy, I will say, okay, the whole society are doing that, and he is one of the society. But the Arab, they were asking him, how you do that? And then if you look at the answer, I mean, look at the translation, guys. This is the Muslim translation. It's, it's not me who said the word garbage. Do you see even the word garbage? So how you say to them in one hand, before you pray, don't touch women, hmm? and you have to do ablution, and don't touch poo, poo and then you are doing the same. You are with dead dogs, and Muhammad, he made, them, he made the Muslim believe that dogs are very dirty. If a dog, he touch your dish, you have to wash it seven times. Okay, wonderful. So how we have to wash the dish seven times, and then this big Abdul, Muhammad himself, is swimming, literally, with dead dogs. How we can explain that? Body of dogs, dogs, not one dog. Like what? It's not like a dog there. You know, a body of dogs. This is the this is the graveyard of dogs for the town. Menstrual rags, and you can imagine what can be inside those blood from menstruation. I mean, with my respect to uh, the women, but you know, blood of a human being can carry a lot of diseases, regardless if it's a man or a woman. So now we jump in the body of water, very small, 
and have many dead dogs and many women blood from period with the rags not only that they don't even wash the rags and take the rags they throw the rags there and garbage and they are throwing asking him like how you do that he says oh water is pure is that an answer of a mature person or mentally ill person So now if we ask Yasser Qadi, if we bring you a cup of water, and this water coming from a jacuzzi, have dead dogs in it, ruin a blood from period, and garbage, would you drink it? Would you do a pollution with it? And if you Muslims, you throw the steps of Muhammad, why you don't do what Muhammad did? Actually, if I am you, I should add dead dogs, women of blood from period, and garbage in the water to make it perfect as the prophet was doing but you don't do that and the idea that water is always pure is additional proof that muhammad is mentally ill where he learned this from allah told him or is making things up is that scientifically accurate and then later we find that muhammad is full of lies and that explain everything The prophet who full of lies and not only that he he, he claimed that Allah he tests his prophet by lies I mean look at the test like you don't test them by let us say uh, you know by joy around them in life no he tests them by lies like what Muhammad was perfect in every aspect of life. Let us continue with this. Here you notice right away how easy to debunk those who claim to be people of knowledge in Islam. They are just a bunch of kids. Or maybe they are assuming that only kids will watch them. So the Prophet of Allah was the most perfect person. If you think about it. Now, this itself is ludicrous because no mentally unstable person can remain fully stable in every single arena of life, every single area of life, except in the biggest, and that is Allah communicates belief. Now, as you probably know, I okay, hold on. Every single arena of life, have you ever heard of somebody have a fight with two women? He needed Allah and the angels and Jibreel and every single believer to stand with him against those two women. Remember, he is perfect in every aspect of life. How Muhammad he solved his husband-wife problem? Watch and love. This is a chapter, it's called the chapter of At-Tahreem. The wives of Muhammad, they got Muhammad busted having sex with one of the means. The wife, she entered the house, Hafsa. She found Muhammad in the top of that woman, doing boom boom. She screamed at him and she said, in my bed on my day, which means you're filthy. Muhammad, he forbid himself. He said, I promise you, I will never do it again. Muhammad, after a few days, he missed this girl to sleep with her. So he said, Allah told me, are you going to forbid what Allah made lawful for you? How he is perfect. If Allah himself is questioning his dignity, if we assume that the one here is truly coming from Allah, the God of the Muhammadan, how Muhammad is perfect, but he is fabricating for, for you know rules because this is about fabricating rules. When Muhammad he says, I forbid this, and this is against Allah teaching, well, Muhammad is not being a prophet of God, he's being a fraud because he just made up a rule, it's not there. But the only answer is Muhammad he missed to sleep with this woman. Marie the cooked, she is not his wife, she is a maid, was sent as a gift 
from the king of Egypt, and she's an African. And here you see the Muslim, they lie to you. If you are an African, they say to you, the prophet is against slavery. His house is full of slaves and he raped them. And then, after Muhammad, he made the promise. And one of the promises, he will make the father of one of his wives a caliphate, just to, sh to shut her up. The news is, you know, start going around, and a fight is start, an argument start. Muhammad, he received verses from Allah. And actually, if you read this verse here, you see how stupid this verse is. When the Prophet disclosed a matter of co in confidence to one of his concerts, concert, dear friend, and she div divulged, divulged, I don't know how to say the word, sorry if my English is not good. So they, they start telling the story to each other and Allah made it known to him. Like what? Hold on. He is the one who told them and now they are telling each other and now Allah made it known to him. Cuckoo. The prophet Cuckoo. He conferred part thereof and repudiated part then when he told her thereof, she said, her who? I mean, have you ever heard of a book like this? She said, she who? She said, who told thee? <laughs> he said, he told me, he who? She who? I mean, what kind of a story this story is? You know, a story of Mr. Bean is more clear. And they say to you, Muhammad was a stable man. Have you ever heard of a book saying he said, she said, but who is he, who is she? Who is who? And then, this is Allah talking, remember, this is not Muhammad supposedly. This is the wisdom of the God himself. If the God is a stupid, what about the Prophet? If you too turn into repentance to him, you too who? Don't the Muslim they say the Quran is enough? Enough of what? To understand no Islam? Okay. I'm asking you now. Here we go, the Quran in front of us. It says here, if you two, who are they, those two? And then, uh, if you two turn into repentance to him, like what they did. Anyone understand the story? To know what, how, repent from what? For your heart indeed inclined. Like what the heck? And if you're back to e back up each other against him, him who? Or the Prophet, hello? Truly Allah. Look here, here the action. Truly Allah is his protector. Protector from who? From the two women? And Jibreel. Look, what the heck? So now we have Jibreel and Allah in fight, in, in, invited for the fight, involved in the fight between the husband and two wives. And we didn't see how perfect he is in every aspect. So now Muhammad is under threat. From two women, they are five foot tall. And now Muhammad, he got the help. We, 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 we. Truly Allah is his protector, brother, and Zibril, brother, and every righteous among those who believe. Okay, Al Qaeda is involved, ISIS is involved. I mean, the whole country is involved. And furthermore, the angels will back him up. All of this to fight two wives. I mean, do you see how perfect he is? To solve a problem inside his house, he made the gang. Okay, if Allah is the creator, you know, come on, guys, think about it. Allah is protector. Are we done? Shouldn't be enough? Why he is counting Jibreel, every single believer, and furthermore, the angel, wait, who is coming, wait, wait. 
not only Osama bin Laden, not only as Zarqawi, may Allah bless his shish kebab, you know, the American made him shish kebab, and, uh, you know, may, uh, not only uh, Yasser Qadi, and, uh, you know, no brother, even the angels and Zibril. All of this proving to us that Muhammad is mentally stable. He is seeking protection from all of those, from two women. You know what? Muhammad did not even seek protection from from the from the from the from the Kuffar army by a verse like this. I mean, who is left? Who is left is not involved in this fight. Muhammad is a perfect person. In which way? They keep repeating a lie, non-stop. Oh, hold on. Muhammad is super intelligent too. Let us see. Most non-Muslims who study Islam, detailed, in detail, this is their conclusion. So what they're saying is, he is slightly mentally crazy, but not fully mentally crazy. Aha, uh -huh. only slightly, brother, only, aha. Uh -huh. Really, that's what they're saying, if you think about it. Now, this itself is ludicrous. Because no mentally unstable person can remain fully stable in every single arena of life, every single area of life, except in the biggest, and that is Allah communicating with him. Go and see in the mental asylum. Go and see. Can you find anybody who is 100% sane in being a father, being a husband? In being a father? Muhammad was a father? Being a husband? We just showed you Muhammad the husband. Being a leader. Being, being a leader? Let us see the leader. Do you know that Muhammad, he sent him to war, he never, he never go with them, he stand in the back? Let us see the leader. Muhammad, he told them. This is now about the leader of war. Read and love. Chapter 8, and this is the only... Uh, 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 you know, exam. I mean, the, the the best example. Sorry, of Muhammad being a prophet. O prophet, Allah saying to Muhammad, O prophet, arose the believers to fight. Uh, fight here is not fight by shoes. Fight to kill. If there is are twenty amongst you, patient, preserving, they will vanquish two hundred. Is that a perfect leader talk or stupid? I can't take that, that if God, he promised me victory, I'm victorious anyway, even if it's one person, no problem. But look what happened. So he told them that the 20 of you were patient and preserving, they will vanquish 200. And not only that, if you read the story behind this, you will see that Muhammad, he saw a vision from Allah. And the Allah in the vision, he told him that the number of the disbelievers will be little. Will be what? Will be little. When they went there and they came back, they told him, <laughs> what little? What are you talking about? What is the little? So look what happened. They went to war and they got busted. So, and they found out that this is a promise of a fool that a 20 cannot fight 200 and they lost and if a hundred they can fight and vanquish not only fight a thousand which means they will be victorious even for a thousand after they came back look what Muhammad gave them for the present Allah has intend uh, uh, lightened your task uh -huh. for he knows that there is a weak spot on you Hmm? But if there is a hundred of you patient and preserving, they will vanquish at two hundred. Like what? A second ago, one hundred they can vanquish one thousand. A second after, Muhammad he got busted. He said, "Oh, I need to change it. Now this is too much. This is so stupid." Okay, 
So listen, listen. Uh, Allah just told me that 100 of you can fight 200. So look at the margin error of this mathematic. From one can fight 10 to one can fight two. If you ask yourself, do Allah knows from the beginning that they have weakness? Obviously he don't, now he knows. It says, الْآنَ خَفَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْكُمْ وَعَلِمَ وَعَلِمَ الْآنَ عَلِمَ <laughs> So now Allah, he, 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 he found out. الآن, in Arabic mean now. He liked your task. Allah liked your task. And now he knew that you have a weakness. And what is the solution? A hundred of you can fight two hundred. Where is the perfect leader? He sent his army outnumbered, promising them victory, and they got beaten. Is it a smart for a leader? And you see, if I am a leader making them, okay, like we will be victorious, don't worry, even if there are too many, but this is God. Supposedly the one here is talking is the God of Muhammad. Do you see it? So when this guy he was saying a perfect leader, he was perfectly leading us to what? Being a military warrior, being everything, and then he is insane because he thinks he's hearing voices. Think hmm. he, he, did he just say he hear voices? D did he say he hear voices? Not me. Okay. So he's saying to you, is he crazy really because he hear voices? Voices. Let us see together. The chapter of Al-Fatiha, which the Muslims recite for us. You know, by heart, but it, it's very short. But they don't know what they are saying anyway. And it's a very silly chapter. I'm trying to open the Jordanian government website, but it's not working. Mm -hmm. Do you know that this chapter, Muhammad, he received it when he was doing poo-poo? Do you know that Muhammad, when he heard his voices, he ran away? I don't know why it's not opening. Let me try it. Hold on. Muhammad is a great man, brother. He's a wonderful man, brother. Who dare to say no? You tell me who dare to say no. Yeah, their website is down, the same as Allah. Uh, but anyway, we, we mentioned it before. Uh, I want to show it to you in English. Otherwise, you know, it's not a big deal. We can show it in Arabic. But we want to show it in English. Let us try a different thing. Hold on. Finally, it opened. Finally. All this time, I'm just clicking at the link of the Muslim website. This is the Islamic government website of the King of Jordan, who he claimed to be descendant from Muhammad, and they explain why he is very corrupt. And he is the puppy of USA, and he is a member of the CIA. CIA. Him and his family. So, if we go and check out 
You see, there's a book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul, which means the reason for the verses to come down or the, how they come down. You will see here, it says, each time the prophet, he went out, this is about went out to do pupu. He used to hear someone calling him, Oh, Muhammad. And whenever he heard this, he used to flee. Like, hold on. Muhammad is perfect. Muhammad is a prophet already. You see, this is not the first time Muhammad heard the angel. He received tons of verses already and he became a prophet long time ago. Why is he running away? The angel already squeezed him three times and he told him, read in the name of your God, Allah. Which is another stupid story proving that Muhammad is mentally ill because how the angel says to him, read, but he do not know how to read. And yet he did not give him a book to read. And then Muhammad, he said to him, I cannot read. And then the angel, he squeezed him again, saying, read. So one of them is stupid. But look at this story here. I'm going to go to do poo-poo. And then this angel, he had 24 hours to talk to me. This angel, he loved to talk to Muhammad only when he's doing poo-poo. Muhammad sat in the ground, squeezing it. You know, and then... Muhammad, and Muhammad like, what, the, what the heck, what the heck, and he start running. And look guys, Waraka, who is not a Muslim, this is the real father of Muhammad, by the way, I believe, based on my study and understanding. Waraka bin Awfal advised the Prophet to remain in his place. When the caller calls him, so he can see what he wanna, like what he wanna say. Like what the heck? It's not Allah inspiring Muhammad. It's not Allah making Muhammad stand. It's the guy, the neighbor of the neighbor of the neighbor, the cousin of the cousin of the cousin, the uncle of the uncle of the uncle, and he is not a Muslim. And later we find that he was sleeping with Muhammad's mother. Do you see how stable this guy is? And if not Waraka, he told Muhammad, wait and listen what he will say to you. You Muslim, you will not have this prayer, supposedly, which is inspired to Muhammad through the twilight seat. And here you ask yourself, why this angel don't come to the house of Muhammad as usual? Oh, I don't want to forget to mention that Muhammad once he says that Jibreel did not come because there was a dead dog under his bed. We will ask, you see, when, when we talk about a, a book and religion, sometimes you ask yourself, who is the one to, the best to present it? As an example, the Christian, they are the best to present the Bible, but not all Christians really qualify to do that. The same we can say to the Muslims. So those people are in the stage, are they the best? Let us take a look about Muhammad, the perfect person. Because the perfect Allah, he made Muhammad the perfect person. And the perfect Allah, he sent the perfect book, it's called the Quran. Listen and laugh. Don't the Muslim, they say to us, not only Muhammad is a perfect, Allah is perfect, and the Quran is perfect. Go, Abdul. But anyway, one of the cool things I want to share with you is that... Um, one of the most fascinating studies in the Qur'an uh, is actually how the, the surahs of the Qur'an are organized. And this is actually a number of different subjects together. The first... Did you, did you hear the word organized? I mean, how... He, the guy, he just said, I want you to take a note. In the minute four in this video, he says how the Qur'an is organized. He said that, not me. But a second after, he will say the Qur'an is not organized. Like what? Brother and sister, one of the amazing things, brother, is how the Quran is organized. And now I will show you that the Quran is not organized. Like what?
Um, one of the most fascinating studies in the Quran uh, is actually how the, the surahs of the Quran are organized. And this is actually a number of different subjects together. The first subject is how are the surahs themselves organized? Fatiha is first, Baqarah is second, Ali Imran is third, etc., etc. Why are they in this order? Uh, because from a, from a Western academic standpoint, um, and by the way, I, when I, the first time I studied Quran seriously, it was not from Muslims. Exactly. Muslim, you want to study the Quran seriously? Come here. Those jokers, they will never teach you anything. They are just there to praise Muhammad and receive donation. It's a business. Nothing personal. It was from non-Muslims. And when they study the Quran, they don't say, Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala Rasulillah. They begin, like they study any literature, they start with criticism. We, we start, when we study the book of Allah, we begin with hamd, we begin with praise. Hmm. We begin with iman that this is the best, you know, وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا Another stupid thing he just mentioned, وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ Those who have a strong belief, or the scholars, they say we believe. Have you ever heard of a scholar? He say, I believe in something you don't understand. If you see what verse he is quoting for you, you will die laughing. He is quoting for you a verse saying, nobody knows what the Quran means save Allah. Like what? No one knows what they mean save Allah. And then we say, and those who they are the scholars, they say we believe. You just say they don't know what they mean. So how you believe in something you do not know what it does mean? Hey, by the way, the person who says to me, Christian Prince, you don't use the word does, I'm going to use it more. So let me, I will use it as much as I can, so just to make you happy. Somebody told you that I'm here teaching you grammar, my friend. My English is funny. Zakir Naik, he speak way better than my, my English. He, it is he does, it is who, who send does down, and he does book. And then a, a universe basic fundamental does. And their foundation of the book does others and other allergical. Like what? But those who, who they are does in their heart, there is a perversity. I mean, let me change the translation. This this translator is using the word I don't know how to read. Excuse my English war, which is a French war. Uh, this is maybe better. Okay. And uh, it's in verses, they are entirely clear. And they are the foundation of the book. Which ones? Which ones, Muslims? <laughs> and those verses of Al-Ahkam, between two brackets, Ahkam, which means for rule. Are you kidding me? Those are clear in the Quran. Okay, let me ask you a question. How about the inheritance? Or how about ab abrogation? How about the muta? They are clear there? Where? <laughs> let us continue. And then he says, uh, a legal uh, punishment for uh, thieves and adultery. Where, where is the legal punishment for thieves and adultery? What are you talking about? Where, where? I know that there's a punishment for the thief, Muhammad, he copied the Arab exactly, but for adultery, the major punishment for adultery is a stoning. We cannot find it in the Quran. Why? If we go and search the hadith, we will find that Muhammad, according to Aisha, he used to have a verses for adultery, for stoning. But a goat, he, she ate it. So when they say we have the punishment, and those are clear. I mean, all those verses in the Quran, they are not even 20. So you are saying to me, only 20 verses in the Quran, they are clear? If we go to the verse of adultery, you will see it's not clear. Why? Let us go. <laughs> brother, those are clear, brother. Brother. <clears throat> Chapter 24, verse number 2. Let us see how clear it is. The women and the man who they are guilty of illegal sexual intercourse. Okay, flog them 100 times. But hold on, is it really clear? No, it doesn't say if those women are singles or married. 
Is it the same punishment for single women and single men as married men and married women? The answer no. So how it's clear? And now if we ask you where we can find the verse for married men, based on what we see here, this goes for both. Because it doesn't say single, it doesn't say married. That means for both. But all of us, we knew that this is not true. So how it's clear? And then let's just show you how it's stupid even the verses here. It says, adulterers marry not, but adulteress. Like, look at this religion. And adulteress none marry her except adulterer or a mushrik. Okay, hold on. We just showed you the tafsir of at, uh, the, the, the chapter of at tahrim where Muhammad was get busted in verse number one, having sex with Mary the court. The Quran says that adulteress or adulterer, he marry only adulteress. So was Muhammad adulteress marrying adulteress? All your Quran is a joke. And then the verse after it says, if anyone accuses a woman of adultery, you have to bring four witnesses. You go read the story, you see, you have to feed the, you have to see the male member of the man going inside the private part of the women. And Muhammad he made it clear, he says the same as the pen go in the inkwell. How in the world you can get four witnesses for that? Who is the stupid here? You go to the bedroom, you find your wife, she have a guy in the top of her, you say, hey, hold on, I need to call four people, okay? And then after you call four people, if he is wearing his jalabiyah or she is wearing her dress and they are covering their private part, there's no proof. How that can be religion? It's clear, brother, it's clear. Tell us more. Okay, this is what we say. That's not what they say. They begin with criticism, skepticism. And so the first exposure, one of the first serious exposures I had to the Quran was actually criticism. And the first criticism was the Quran is unorganized. The surahs are in this random order and the subject keeps going from one to the other and even they call them chapters of the uh, the Quran. Do you see? Do you see what he's talking about? Guys, listen carefully what he's saying. This is very important. Remember the topic is Muhammad was a crazy man or not? A person who is mentally ill, he suffers from flight of thoughts. I will give you an example. I'm Muhammad now. And I will make Quran for you. Look at the tree. She is big and beautiful. I need to make coffee. My cow is hungry. My grandmother is sick. I need to look for the screwdriver. I don't know what to pick because Allah is Akbar. I fried the fish yesterday. And tomorrow, the fish is alive. I mean, what is this? This guy is saying to you with the clear words that the topics of the Quran, they have nothing to do with each other. And yet the funny, he used the word organized. Listen carefully. They begin, like they study any literature, they start with criticism. We, we start, when we study the book of Allah, we begin with hamd, we begin with praise. We begin with iman that this is the best, you know, وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا Okay, this is what we say. That's not what they say. They begin with criticism, skepticism. And so the first exposure, one of the first serious exposures I had to the Qur'an was actually criticism. And the first criticism was the Qur'an is unorganized. The surahs are in this random order 
and the subject keeps going from one to the other and even they call them chapters of the, uh, the Quran right that's what they call it but they don't call it surah they call it a chapter even though a chapter and a surah are not the same thing at all they're not the same I personally don't agree with the translation of surah as chapter I don't because there's a certain standard in literature for a chapter a chapter has logical points that are made in chronology and if a chapter like chapter 5 is going to repeat something from chapter 3 they won't do it the same way they'll just say refer back to chapter 3 see that's what chapters do they're built chronologically the other thing about chapters is you cannot begin a book with chapter 12 you can't do it you have to begin with chapter what one and one is the first thing the author writes then the author writes two then the author writes three then the author writes four and even the student has to study chapter one first and then two and then three and then four but when the Quran was revealed the, or the first surah revealed where is that in the Quran is that in the beginning that's all the way at the end so if you're studying Quran right now from the beginning you're gonna read the first revelation at the end of your journey <laughs> it's very different so then the, the order is not even the order in which it was revealed it's not chronological hold on the order of the Quran the Muslims they have today is not even the order it was revealed do you hear it that's mean the Muslims agree that they corrupted their book because if this is a book from God and God he sent it in certain order who are you to change it was Allah making a mistake are you fixing the correct the, the, the wrong order of Allah isn't it the Quran says that those who they change the location of the words of Allah from its places they are corrupting the book and this is the verse in the front of us chapter 4 verse number 46 chapter 5 verse number 13 chapter 5 verse number 41 all of them saying the same that those who do corruption is those who change the location of the words from its place and we just heard him saying that the Quran today is not according to revelation so according to who al-Bukhari Uthman maybe according to Muhammad can Muhammad change the words of Allah can he change the location do you have a permission and the Quran say clearly those who change and accusing the Jews by the way and if you go and see the story behind this you will see a Jew he put his finger over the word he did not even change the words go read the story behind this verse the story according to Muslims, not according to me. He put his hand over it. He did not even move it from the place. The Muslims, they moved the whole book from its place. And yet they say, our book is not corrupted. So what we heard from this guy, that the Quran is a messed up book. We cannot call it chapter, chapter is wrong. Because chapter is something have to come in order. And if you say something in chapter 1, you don't repeat it in chapter 5. But the Quran is nothing but repeat of a stupid talk. I will give you an example. A person who do not know what to say. All of this is a repeat. All of this is nothing but a repeat. Repeat, 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 repeat. But I'm going to show you a clear one which will blow your mind with the stupidity of the author of the Quran. You know, in any language, if you are trying to make a rabbi music or even a poetry, if you repeat the same thing over and over and over, people will laugh at you. Because there's no point of repeating the thing. Why I want to keep repeating it? What what the point? Do we have any Muslim can tell us why I keep repeating it? 
is repeating it will like teach a donkey to memorizing it why Allah keep repeating his words why Allah keep saying things and none of them make sense and this is an example watch with me Don't sleep, because now we are going to read the sentence Allah He said in one chapter. Do you see what I'm talking about? We are not done. No, 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 we are not done. Look, look, look what the heck. We are not done. 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 I'm not sure when we are going to be done, sorry. This is God talking? What is this? And if you go in details, you will die laughing. Allah, he created the man and he taught him the language. Not only is it the language like the clear language. Did he? Well, did your prophet even been taught by Allah how to read, how to write? The sun and the moon in a fixed courses. Did he? We go, we find Muhammad saying that the sun set in murky water. I mean, look at this. He have to add at the end, if you speak Arabic, you will see, he have to add the letter A and N. And then when he is out of words, he say he switch Anam. It was Mizan, now it's Anam. Then he switch back, Rihan. What is this? And also corn with its leaves and stock for fodder and sweets. What? In which of the blessing of your Lord you deny? Hey Allah, did you create really the genie from fire? And he says to us, how you can deny the, the favor of your Lord? But isn't it Allah, he says, we created every living thing from water? So how you created the genie from fire and everything living thing created from water? Hmm? Any Muhammadan? And from the water, we created every living thing. Who is the fool here? I don't know if we have any Muslims. <clears throat> Allah created the genie from fire. In different verse, he says Allah created every living thing from water. And the fire Allah he created the genie from is a fire samum, which means a flame. Very tough a flame. And we made it from the water, every living thing. Hey Muslims, is the angels made it from water? Is the black stone made it from water? Because the black stone is a living thing. Even Muhammad, he used to say, Assalamu Alaikum to the stones. And here, as long as we are talking about Muhammad being crazy, Maybe any Muslim can volunteer to us and tell us why Muhammad used to, you know, to, to say Assalamu Alaikum to stones. And the mountain he said to Muhammad Assalamu Alaikum. 
and the rocks in the mountain they say to him assalamu alaikum Are you Muslim? Is that a sign of stupidity, a sign of mental illness? Let us find the hadith in English. Yes, Akadi, he said, the Prophet, if he is mentally ill, he will not be perfect in everything else. Like only the, the only thing he have he hear voices. Hmm? But he hear voices from who? From God? Muhammad he claimed that there's a certain rock in Mecca. Greet him each time he go by. Do you see it? This is Sahih. Do we really need more proof that Muhammad is mentally ill? There's a certain rock. When Muhammad, he walked by, the rock said to him, Assalamu alaikum, O Messenger of Allah. And she speak Arabic. So when this guy, he says, the prophet, he hear voices, he's right. Rocks talk to him, literally. Additional thing about Muhammad being crazy. When a man, he adopt crazy stories, he must be crazy too. As an example, you see, the Arab, they keep saying to Muhammad, like with this guy, he just said, well, he hear voices, I mean, but everything else is perfect. But in order to believe in somebody to be a prophet, shouldn't we ask him for a prophecy prophecy or miracle? The Arab, they keep asking him, if one sign sent by his Lord, just one sign, none come from Muhammad. And then Muhammad, he start talking about miracles happening before him. I will give you an example of one of those miracles. <clears throat> oh, Lord have mercy. Read with me, please, and laugh. A clear evidence that Muhammad is not mentally ill and he is super genius. Prophet Solomon, this is one of the stupid stories of Muhammad. You see, to know if somebody is mentally ill, you have to tell, to go and check his stories. I mean, there is many people, they wear glasses, they carry like maybe Samsonite, wearing a suit, but he is still crazy. I mean, he, he looked fine. Until he opened his mouth, then we will know if he is smart or stupid or crazy. That's Muhammad. Muhammad now is telling you a story about a prophet. His name is Solomon. Nothing informed him the genie of the death of Solomon, except what? Except of a little worm of the earth, which kept chewing slowly his stake. Let us examine the stupidity or the intelligence of Muhammad. If he is intelligent, he will say he is intelligent. Who of you Muslims believe that there was a guy, his name is Solomon, and he was dead for a year. And he died standing over his staff as a king. And nobody noticed that he is dead for a year. Until the termite, they ate his stick. I want anyone who have little honesty to tell me if you believe in this or not. Let us go and read the interpretation. Chapter 34, verse number 14. 34, 14. 
Okay, this is Ibn Kathir. And this is the Muslim website. This is 34. And this is 14. Read with me, Muhammadans. This is what you believe, this is your religion. And this is your genius prophet. Okay. Allah tell us, tells us how Suleiman, peace be upon him, died, and how Allah concealed his death, brother, from the jinn who were subjugated to him, brother, to do hard labor. So he remained leaning on his stick, brother, which was his staff. Ibn Abbas, may Allah bless him, and Mujahid, and Hassan, and Qutada. So this is not weak hadith. This is very strong. Look how many. Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Hassan, Qutada, all of those, and others. And Ibn Kathir too. Said, he stayed like this for a long time, brother. Nearly a year. When the creature of the earth, which was kind of warm, ate his through his stick, it become weak and fell in the ground, brother. Then become apparent that he had died a long time before. It's also become clear to the jinn and men alike that the jinn do not know the unseen. <laughs> I mean, who is the stupid here? The one who wrote the story in the Quran, or the one who wrote it in the Hadith, or the one who put it in the Tafsir, or the one who believe it? So this king, he have hundreds of wives. He have army, he have military. He have an army of a chicken according to the Quran. Army of chickens, yes, brother. True story, brother. Who can understand the language of the ants, but yet he went to the school to learn the language of the birds. And before Solomon, we were marshaled his host of jinn and men and birds. What his army? This is not me. This is the smart Muhammad who is stable. This is not the crazy Muhammad brother. This is the stable Muhammad. An army of a human and genie and birds. And now this guy, you know the story of Solomon. Honestly, remind me of this story here. Hold on. If your doorbell. <clears throat> There's a story. Remind me of uh, the story of Solomon. Oh, hold on, this is not the one I want. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> oh boy. I think you know the video I'm, I'm talking about. There's a guy who is leading like a 10,000 chicken. Let us see this one. Hold on. Brother, the prophet, he is not illusionist and he is not delusionate and he is not a stupid. He is telling us a true story. All those are proven to be true. If the wall is breached, Helm's Deep will fall. 
Even if it is breached, it would take a number beyond reckoning. Thousands to storm the key. Uh, Tens yeah. of thousands. But my lord, there is no such force. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. This if is the, the guy. Is breached, Helm's deep. This is the guy, the Artenas, he's perfect. He is not illusionate. He is not a stupid. I mean, he's perfect in everything. Let us check one more thing. What about Muhammad's sex? Even his sex was illusion. Read and laugh. Once the prophet bewitched so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. But hold on. Yasser Qadi, he says the prophet was perfect in everything else. Not only hear he only hear voices. In the rest, he is perfect. The only problem they have against Muhammad, he hear voices. That's what he said. How truthful that is. The Islam, detailed, in detail, this is their conclusion. So what they're saying is, he is slightly mentally crazy, but not fully mentally crazy. Really, that's what they're saying, if you think about it. Now, this itself is ludicrous, because no mentally unstable person can remain fully stable in every single arena of life, every single area of life, except in the biggest, and that is Allah communicating with him. Hmm. Do you see how stable he is? He imagined himself that he had done a thing, in fact he did not. And that destroyed all of his prophethood proof because if you have any, it's gone because he imagined, he's delusional. Even his wife, she said that the prophet, even he imagined himself having sex with them, but in fact he did not do it. Read it. Ayesha, she said, that the prophet continued for such and such a period of time, imagining that he had boom boom with his wife, but in fact he did not. And if you read the story, it says that somebody, he put magic on him. But all of us, we knew that this is not true. In the old days, they excuse a person, says he, obviously, because during the day, mostly he's fine, but then something happened to him. Like somebody have epilepsy, somebody hear voices, he hear a sound of a ring. The Prophet was perfect. How Muhammad he received the sound, the Quran. We heard Yasir Qadi saying that the Prophet in everything else is was perfect. But let us see what Muhammad received. Muhammad all over, he says that the bell is the instrument of shaitan. The bell of the instrument of shaitan. Read how many times. All of this is sahih. And then he said, when he received Quran, he received a sound of a bell. Muslims. Is that how a prophet of God received messages from God? A sound of a bell? And here in Arabic it says, anni, which means he have like, uh, what do they call it in English, like shifronizia, you know, like, yufsam, I, I became unaware of what's happening. You know, I'm different word, I'm in drugs. The angel sometime comes to me with a voice which resembles the sound of a ringing bell. And when this state abandoned me, I remember that, I remember what the angel has said. 
and this is a type of divine inspiration is the hardest on me and the angel sometimes he come to me in the image of a man and he walk and he talk to me so when the angel is not coming in the shape of a man he come in the shape of a bell and he speak like a bell you can go right now and you know read study cases about people who hear sounds of a bell those who hear voices you know I remember when I finished my uh, with the army you know they send you like to offices everybody have his own reason there's one guy next to me he said I said so how long you serve I'm talking to him he said I, uh, I this match because of uh, chapter 17 I remember I think it was chapter he said chapter 17 so I don't know what chapter 17 is so then I said so what is that he says I hear voices he is not qualified even to be a soldier in an army <clears throat> how Muhammad can be qualified to be a prophet when he adopts stupid stories he hear voices resemble a bell when he himself he said that the bell is the instrument of shaitan as you see and you know as long as Muhammad he receive a sound of a bell which is Quran we challenge Yasser Qadi to translate to us or to explain to us how Muhammad was able to translate the bell sound into Arabic see the Muslim they claim that Muhammad he received perfect Quran in Arabic actually the Quran mentioned that many times but Muhammad now is dis destroying what he said before because he was not receiving Quran in Arabic he was receiving a ringing of a bell and as long as Muhammad he received a ring of a bell how that ring of a bell became Quran in Arabic obviously Muhammad is a mentally ill person and that explained why he say things and he contradict himself all the time as an example Muhammad he ordered something he forbid it second day mentally ill If you go in the Quran, and the Muslim they say to us, Muhammad claimed that his God sent him a perfect Arabic Quran. But look what the Quran says: Allah will make Quran better than the Quran, and will abrogate Quran to send you a Quran similar or better. That alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is mentally ill. In the best scenario, he's stupid. Because if Allah is the one who made the Quran, then there is no way that Allah is going to make better Quran than the Quran of Allah. Unless Allah is more than one, and each individual he have different skills. None of our revelation we do abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. How somebody he claimed that his God is perfect, he says such a statement. How Allah can make Quran better than the Quran. And if Allah want to make you forget the Quran to send you something similar, how silly is that? But in order to understand this, you go and read the story behind it, you will find that Muhammad, people were laughing at him. So he have to fabricate an answer. They said, look at Muhammad, he enjoyed his followers an order in the morning second day the second morning he forbid it a clear sign of mental illness this is a chapter 2 verse 106 and this is your Islamic website and this is the explanation for the verse not me not Christian Prince saying that everything I'm showing you is in the screen from your Islamic scholars, from your Islamic words, printing translation. Muhammad, he cannot say, he can stay focused and be a person who is a prophet of God. He 
really just trying things. Read carefully. The, the verse, nothing of our revelation, even a single verse. Do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten? <laughs> the Muslim, they say, oh, nobody can forget Quran, which is a joke because we have the hadith of Aisha saying clearly that the chapter of al fatih sorry, Al-Ahzab, was equal to the chapter of the cow, which means just in one chapter is more than 110 verses is missing. And now we find that Allah caused you to be forgotten. But why Muhammad saying caused you to be forgotten? Because he was forgetting Quran and people laugh at him. But we bring in place on one better or like therefore, thereof. The commentator of the Quran says the idolaters or the, 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 the one who worship idols, supposing not Muslims, said, don't you see that Muhammad, he command his companions with uh, something and then he forbid it from the same and command them the opposite. One day he says something and the following day he retract it. Be honest, is that clear that Muhammad is mentally ill? Listen carefully. Allah, he gave him a verse today. Today. Less than 24 hours after Allah, he sent him a verse, says, forget about the verse I gave you yesterday. It was a stupid. Any Muslim? I can provide you with millions of proofs of Muhammad mental illness. So to make a conclusion of what we said, we mentioned that Muhammad, he take a shower with dead dogs, women blood from period, garbage, stinky water, claiming that it's pure. Muhammad, he forget even Quran. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He forgot what he said. And the Quran promised that we will recite to you and we will not, never forget. Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he did not. Muhammad was bewitched according to Muslims. Muhammad received voice of Allah, sorry, of the Quran, as a sound of a bell, but he is the one who says that the bell is the instrument of shaitan. Muhammad, he created a rule, second day he forbid it. Muhammad, he said, do muta. Then he said, don't do muta. Then he said, do muta. Then he said, don't do muta. Is it a clear sign that he is mentally ill? And remember, what we are seeing in front of us, this is Muslim books, this is not ours. It's not a Christian who is saying the Arab at the time of Muhammad, they were making fun of Muhammad because he says something in the morning and second day he forbid it. Is that what the God he did with Moses? He sent him a verse in the morning, like God, he sent the Ten Commandments to Moses. And then second day, he changed the Ten Commandments, he sent him new Ten Commandments. And the third day, he sent him other commandment, saying, forget about the commandment I gave you a day before. If this is not clear for you, that Muhammad is mentally ill, what is going to be proved to you? Or maybe the Prophet Solomon's story and his ring, who Shaitan took it when uh, Suleiman, he went to the bathroom. Or maybe the flying carpet of Suleiman in the Quran. Or maybe the staff of Suleiman when he dies standing. Or maybe the hoodhood, the bird who is a specialty to find women have no hair in their legs. It's clear that Muhammad is not stupid and he is not mentally ill. Or maybe Muhammad, or sorry, Dr. Muhammad, when he says, that if the man have orgasm first, the baby will look like the man. And if the women have orgasm first, the baby will look like a, the women. Or maybe the Muslims, and actually I saw a video, hold on. This is an Indonesian video. This is how they fool each other. The prophet brother, he forbid adultery prophet. The prophet is the one who allow adultery.
You are lying to whom? Islam mengharamkan perbuatan zina uh -huh. dan segala sarana yang menghantarkan kepadanya. I will shave my 29, today is 30, foot, beard, if you know what you are talking about. So Islam forbid adultery? Since when? Isn't the Quran says, force not your girls to do prostitution, and if, if you force them, Allah is all merciful? Show me one verse in the Quran saying that prostitution is haram. It says the opposite. If they agree to the prostitution, is wonderful business. If you force them, it's okay still. Allah will forgive you. Chapter 24, verse number 33. What a scam. And not to forget Muhammad, he was sleeping around. Muhammad, when Muhammad, he slept with Mary the cook, was that adultery or not? When Muhammad, he raped Sophia, was that adultery or not? When, uh, I mean, you, you name it. When Muhammad, he went to the house of his own son and he flirted with the wife, the wife of his own son, was that fornication or not? But they say to them, Islam is against fornication. And the verse say clearly, you can open a pimp house. Allah himself is a pimp. If Allah is against adultery, then how Allah, he opened a pimp house in heaven? How many women you will have in heaven, Abdul? You see those Muslim Indonesian, I, and I feel sorry for them. Isn't it prostitution that there's a God will promise you endless number of women? Is it prostitution that your prophet he allow muta? Now he will say to me, oh, the prophet forbid it, here we go. Crazy man. If it was adultery, it's adultery, why you allow it? Do you see the stupidity? Oh, the prophet, he uh, don't uh, do it no more. So it doesn't matter. So he was adulterous and then he stopped. And he claimed that this is the teaching from Allah. So adultery was part of Islam in the muta, and then a Muhammad he changed his mind, and then he forbid it. And that's why the Arab they are making fun of this guy. I challenge all those who claim to be Ustad from Indonesia, and those who speak Arabic, and those who speak English, and those who speak any language, who claim to be sheikhs, to come here and challenge me. All of you are a bunch of potatoes, liar, and you are a comedy on the stage. You are the same as your prophet. The Lord, the Messiah, he said, from their fruits you shall know them. From their fruits. The Messiah never commit sin, never taught sin, never preached sin. Even the Quran in chapter 19, verse 19 says, the Holy Son, that is Jesus, my friend. While Jesus in the faith of the Quran is the Holy Son, Muhammad in the Quran is the faith of the Son. And I'm not insulting your prophet, by the way. Muhammad himself, he said that. He says, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسٌ وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكِينَ نَجِسٌ Muhammad's parents were mushrikeen, and he said they are nijis, so he is a son of a filthy man and woman, according to the Quran, while Jesus is a son of holy God. His mother was pure. His father is who? Who is the one who made Mary have that son? The Muslim, they will say, Allah. Who is the one who made my mother have me? The answer is my father. Who is the father of Jesus? So Jesus is born as holy. His mother is the best of women in mankind in history, according even to the Quran. Chosen by God, 
Muhammad is chosen by God to be born of adulterous idol worshippers. The Quran described them najis. And Muhammad until the age of 40, he was not a believer. And actually, the video we played for you from Man Khan is saying that, that Muhammad, he have no idea, and he was not a believer. This is why he is explaining. Chapter 2, the last verses in chapter 2, where he said clearly that Muhammad have no idea what God is and the Quran actually said that clearly that Muhammad was an infidel and he is a pagan worshipper and actually nothing changed after Islam Muhammad he kissed the black stone before Islam Muhammad kissed the black stone he is a black stone kisser and when you ask the Muslims why he kissed the black stone they say because it's from heaven well this is what the Arab before Islam they believe did Allah say to you in the Quran, it's from heaven? Show me. And even if it's from heaven, why you kiss it anyway? How stupid is that argument is? They don't know what they are worshiping. We made, we made a video says, no Muslim can answer this. What is that? What Allah mean? They don't know. What the real name of Allah? They don't know. How Allah is made of? They don't know. How Allah look like? They don't know. What the word Israel mean? They don't know. What the word Abraham mean? They don't know. What the word Jibreel mean? They don't know. What the word Jerusalem mean? They don't know. What the word Mikael mean? They don't know. They didn't know nothing, because this is nothing but a scam, a theft. Muhammad is stealing names from other religions, putting it in the Quran. Yet he do not know what they mean. How this man become a prophet? I say to you, it was a perfect time for such a scammer, mentally ill person, to have a gang to take over a society around him. But the Quran is so clear. Muhammad is a pagan. He was not a believer in the God of Abraham, as the Muslim they lie and they say, and the Quran in front of you. And thus have we, by our command, send inspiration to thee, thou knowest not before what was revelation and what was faith? He didn't even have faith in the true God. Not only he never heard of revelation, which is clear that he is not a follower of Abraham, because Abraham, he have revelation, according to Islam at least. But Muhammad never knows what revelation and never have faith. So what was Muhammad, a communist? He is nothing but an idol worshipper. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to download it, share it with your friends. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord. Islam is a fraud. And we prove it to you every day. We are not making fun of Muhammad for being a stupid and crazy. We are making a statement that it is a crazy to follow a crazy man. He will take you to hell. A person who contradict himself, a person who believe that the sperm of women, women have a sperm and their women coming from their ribs. That a man have a sperm and his sperm coming from his backbone. And actually now I have to stop my video because I have feel little pain in my backbone and I'm afraid my sperm will stop. Yeah, the faucet is there. True God who do not know how the baby is created True God, who he think that the sun set in murky water. True God, or true prophet, who uh, cannot explain himself. And the funny, the Muslims, in order to defend their prophet, they say all the crazy stuff. Oh, is Alexander the Great? He thought that the sun set in murky water, brother. He thought. The Quran doesn't say he thought. It says he found it. 
And your prophet said, do you know what the sun said? They said, oh Allah and his messengers knows best. He said it's set in a dummy, murky, hot water. And what the Muslim will say? Brother, this is weak hadith, brother. Anything is embarrassment, it is weak. Conclusion, Muhammad is weak. He was controlled by black magic. They control his penis. They control his tongue. Imagine, even they have a chapter in the Quran about receiving satanic verses. I mean, what is missing? His cousin raped him. Black people, they, they used to ride him. This is what they say in their books. I mean, what is, what is, he used to, he used to leak. He received Quran when he's doing poo-poo. When he have sex, he imagined he's having, having sex, but in fact, he did not. I mean, name one thing for me is normal about this person. And yet they say to us, the prophet was a perfect man. I agree. He is the perfect idiot of the village. Praise the idiot. God bless you. And see you soon. And remember to love the Muslims. Don't hate them. They are victims. And we are here to help them, not to attack them. We are here exposing the liar Muhammad. Muslims are victims. We feel sorry for them. May the Lord open their eyes and their heart, not like the God of Islam who closed the heart so people will not hear and see. Our God, he says, I came for the sick. Allah, he says, I will make you more sick. This is why their God is a sick God. When the Jews, they were questioning Jesus, why you talk to those people? Those are sinners. Jesus said, I came for the sick. Here you see who is really mentally ill. The one who want to close your heart so you don't Listen, you don't see, you don't hear. Yet he sent you a prophet supposedly to guide you. And then he said to the prophet, why are you trying to guide those who Allah must guide them? You see how stupid this religion is? While Jesus, he says, I came here to heal the sick. I came here to help the sick. I am here actually for the sick, not for the healthy. And this is the truth. If you are healthy, you do not need a doctor. It's a stupid to say, you need a doctor when you are not sick. It's stupid to send a doctor to the one who is not sick. And it make it more funny. When Allah, he says, are you going to guide the one who Allah deceive? Chapter four, verse number 88. This is explain everything about this trashy garbage religion. Are you going to guide the one who Allah led Mis, mis, you know, mislead, deceive. Are you going to are you going to guide them? And look at the first translation. You know, in Arabic it says something. In English says something else. It says, at, at, "Do you want to guide man Allah? Are you going to guide the one who Allah deceive? Change the translator. You will see a new Quran. It's a miraculous." Are you going to guide the one who Allah deceive? Who made them go astray? This is the Muslim translation. Allah. Do you want to guide the one who Allah made astray? Do you see it? Do you want to guide him whom Allah he has made go astray? So how Muhammad was sent to guide mankind when Allah said to him, Are you going to guide those I am his guide? What's wrong with you? But the coward Muhammad here explained why they will not believe in him. He has given himself an excuse why he cannot convince them. He said, Allah told me, are you going to guide the one who I deceived them? But by doing that, he proved to us that he is the devil. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son, that is Jesus. To do what? To save the world, not to misguide them. 
I came for the sick. Muhammad, he says, I came for the healthy. And the sick, they are made sick by Allah. <laughs> what a stupid cult made by a stupid prophet who contradict himself in every step of walk. God bless you. Thank you very much. Download the video. And again, we appreciate those who support us in every way and every, every mean by downloading the video, adding subtitles, and those who do donation. Thank you. See you soon. And this is humbly your brother Christian Prince while with you for a short video of an hour and 45 minutes only. You know, usually it goes for five hours. So this is very short. Praise be to Allah. He made it short. Thank you.